Hello, I'm Alexis Williams, and welcome to Scaling Enterprise Agility, a podcast from Accenture and Alassian, where we discuss how businesses can be really intentional about their ways of working. I'm joined by my co-host, Christian Kelly, and we're coming to you from the Atlassian Team 24 conference in Las Vegas. Today, we're joined by Megan Demon, Director of Delivery Enablement at Accenture, as she talks about Accenture's journey to enterprise agility. We hope you enjoy. Megan, thank you so much for joining us in Las Vegas. We're so excited to be here at Atlassian Team 24. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for inviting me here. I'm really excited to be here. Of course, happy to have you. And we're also here with Christian Kelly. Howdy. Christian, hello. Pleasure as always. Pleasure as always. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Megan's here. You're getting all your water in? Uh, a little bit, yes. Need much more. Very good. Feeling a little dry. <laughs> yes, I know. It's always like that. You never have enough water. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for joining us. Um, you're, so you're joining us from Accenture's CIO's office. And so as we're here at Atlassian's annual flagship conference, Team 24, can you tell us a little bit more about the Accenture CIO's organization? Obviously, Accenture is a massive company. How do you, just to context for the folks watching, can you share a little bit more about uh, the global IT footprint in serving that organization? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so global IT is, is what we like to call it. Um, it's about 17,000 people mm -hmm. strong, um, give or take, um, globally. So we have you know, people all over the world uh, supporting you know, Accenture's um, you know, 730,000 plus employee base and our 9,000 plus some clients right? and, and teams there. Um, so it's, it's a pretty you know, significant uh, size shop. Yes, and so as you think about, um, you know, in, in the context of enterprise agility and, and that journey, since we talk a lot about enterprise agility within the partnership, can you also share a little bit about what that journey has been like for Global IT thus far? For sure. Um, we started our enterprise agility journey about three years ago, um, and we started really small. So we had actually um, completed our cloudification journey. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, really updated our, our digital technology. And through that, we, of course, realized we needed to reimagine how we deliver. Mm -hmm. We really, in order to harness the power of, of all of that, you know, digital technology, we had to change. Um, and we needed to get some kind of guide rails and controls in place for how we do that. And that really triggered our um, broader agility journey of, you know, process, tools, and, and people change. Mm -hmm. And we started really small, um, you know, with a few um, teams and started to kind of define what does that foundation look like for us for delivery, um, and then built upon that as we learned from those teams and, and grew. Um, by year two, we had a pretty solid idea of, of what it looked like for us, um, and then um, started to build kind of a self-enablement process to really go faster. Um, I called it our go faster approach, mm -hmm. right? How do we go faster and really scale this? And so we, um, we really invested in self-enablement. Um, and then by year three, you know, we were predominantly through our organization in terms of getting that foundation in place for agility. Love it. Okay, so I can't wait to dig more into that as we spend the next hour together. Um, I want to talk about your, you know, the blog that you write. Super interesting. You have also a very passionate hobby that you do. So can I you do. share a little bit about your hobby and how you relate that in the business context? Absolutely. Um, so it was around the time I started driving this agility transformation that I also decided to learn how to rock climb. Um, <laughs> and I learned how to do that in a gym, in my, my local gym, uh, with my son. Mm. Um, he's 11, and um, we loved it the first time we did it. And, and we joined our gym as members, and we, we climb often. And one day I was at the gym, and I was reading an article in between climbs, kind of resting my arms, and I was reading this article about kind of the character traits of climbers. Mm. And it was really interesting. All of a sudden, something in my head clicked because it was the same kind of values and behaviors and things that we're expecting of our people in enterprise agility and how we want to be. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, I should write about this. I should, you know, it all of a sudden just connected. And um, I've been writing this blog. And, and I, I think people find it uh, kind of interesting about, you know, the various things that I'm learning through climbing. And, and I think the biggest thing that I learned through climbing is actually being able to feel agility. You know, it's one thing to say, oh, yeah, my team delivers in some agile way and, you know, but actually feeling the outcome of that 
is totally different and climbing actually gives me some real time experience um, feeling that so it's, it's sort of fun to share. I love that and it's also a very physically intensive sport so like kudos to you for being able to do that I think I would maybe last like <laughs> Five like steps up, and then I would be done. It takes it takes some it takes time, um, yeah. but it's totally worth it. Awesome. Um, and so you know, as you think about sort of the different peaks of rock climbing and the IT journey, what are some of sort of the key themes that you've been able to really pull out from rock climbing, and and how you drive some of that like resilience and and as you are climbing towards the change that you're seeking within your own organization? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really not that different when I think of kind of any transformational process, right? Um, climbing has similar things, similar components. It has process and technique. Mm -hmm. It has tools and it has a community, right? And um, those are kind of the things that I, I lean on and, and bring back into my organization. You know, um, all climbers have the same lingo that they follow. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, it's a safety thing, right? It's like yes. guide rails. Um, that, that keep you alive. You know? um, so it's really important. And then they have tools that they use, like harnesses and shoes and ropes, that same thing. They're there for your safety mm -hmm. um, and, um, and comfort in, in some cases. And then the community um, and, and the encouragement you get from that community is also a really um, important thing to bring into our organization. And um, it, it really just they are so synonymous um, between agility and that those types of climbing techniques. It's it's really interesting. Yeah. So we're going to ask you a bunch of things that come from your blog because they're re really really interesting. We want to dive a little deeper <laughs> in. Thank them. you. So one of the things that really struck me was your discussion of some of the counterintuitive things that you find in climbing, and I think it was trusting your feet. Yes. Can you talk a little bit more about what that means for the non-climber mm -hmm. and then how you've applied that with some examples, because I know you've given them in CIO and the journey that you're taking? Absolutely. When I, when I first started climbing, and, and even if you're a non-climber and you're watching people climb, you, you think, wow, they must be really strong. In fact, you, you just said that, yeah, right? exactly. Uh, you must be really, really strong. Um, and you think about and sort of envision, you know, a lot of pulling up, you know, on these holds and, and the rocks and and it, you think it requires a large amount of upper body strength. Mm -hmm. But what I learned, which I didn't know ahead of time, right, going into it and starting to learn these things, is that your feet are actually almost more important. Um, and um, making sure that, that you have your placement correct with your feet um, and trusting them to stick on these little tiny ledges um, so that you can progress. And the things that, that I've, I've learned from that and taken back to work is that Again, sometimes you don't know everything going into it, right? You may have um, an illusion or an idea about what something might be like, what your journey might be like in your transformation, mm. but be open to understanding new things, right? There might be something new that you didn't even realize was going to happen through that, um, and then embrace that and, and learn from it. Um, and I think trusting your feet, I say it all the time, it's it's the foundation mm -hmm. um, when you climb. And, and so to have a good enterprise agility journey, you really need to understand what your foundation is. Mm. Just as a follow-up to that, it, it also seems like there's a point of leverage in climbing with trusting your feet and being able to get those toe holds. Did you find as you were going through the journey and the team were going through the journey that you found some like uh, counterintuitive points of leverage that like helped along the journey thus far? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, there's a lot of discussion in agility about you know cross-functional people or cross-functional teams and is that um, good or is it not and um, one of the things that was kind of counterintuitive because we were built over years to do it in one way was our developers develop and our operators operate and the mm -hmm. two shall not meet right mm -hmm. and and as we have moved into these you know DevSecOps teams and really started to build cross-functional people we had to get over that hurdle because there is an advantage for your developers to understand what's happening in production because they can probably fix it really quickly, right? Mm -hmm. And it'll never happen again. And it's much more efficient in that way. And it's just not something you would think about, you know, at the mm -hmm. outset. Well, the other thing you said in that, and then I know you have another question, so sorry for just saying. <laughs> the other thing you said in that same blog was about trust 
and like trust quotient, because you were yeah. talking about trusting your feet and then trust quotient with teams. Can you explain that in yes. a little bit more detail for our audience? Absolutely. Um, trust is super important in climbing. Um, you know, kind of those components I talked about, trusting your feet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, trusting your tools, so trusting your harness, your rope, um, whatever tools you're leveraging to climb, trusting your belayer, your community um, to keep you safe. Um, super important and if you can't trust that system as a whole it is very hard to progress it, you, you just you literally are stalled out because you're afraid mm. right you you have this idea of risk happening and so if you don't trust um, the system that risk aversion is going to keep you from progressing generally mm. it definitely did me you know when I first started climbing I was like well this this kind of scary yeah. but eventually I learned to trust the process and trust the system and with agility, it's, it's really the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, you have to trust the system being put in place and you need to be thoughtful about that system that you're putting in place, that it has the appropriate guide rails to keep teams safe as it were, right? And um, if you can do that, then you know, as leaders, you can sit back and say, I trust this system and I trust my people to engage in this system and that it's going to keep them safe and, and delivering um, in the right way for us. And then that in turn empowers your people, mm -hmm. right? To be more engaged. And, you know, from a trust quotient perspective and mm -hmm. how do I measure that? I measure it with engagement. Um, that's the number one thing. So Our, you're actively tracking that? And um, we're not actively tracking it. Okay. Um, we do track it actually yeah. in various ways. I'm not tracking it specifically for what I'm doing because we have a lot of change going on, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so generally though, what I track is how are the teams telling their stories of how they're delivering? Are they even including how they're delivering as part of their story? And most of the time they do. And they're really excited and they talk about um, shared success and mm. how much more they're collaborating. And you can just literally feel it um, that, that their leaders are trusting them more and they have more ownership in the decisions because we all kind of trust each other in mm. that world. And, and to go off script for a little mm. bit, um, you know, CK and I run into this a lot in our own business. Mm. We're trying to build uh, and grow a global business. And right. so, you know, like trusting the system, very important, um, but also like having people trust their feet. And so is there something that you felt worked really well with your teams in teaching them how to trust their feet? Because yeah. I would love to maybe even take some of that into what we're trying to do. Right. It's, you know, that process of learning from failure, mm. right? Um, and, and creating the safety to do that, I think is really important. So knowing that you have kind of the guide rails in place, the rules that people need to follow, making sure they're educated, they understand those things, and mm -hmm. that you understand what those are as well so that you can trust the process, um, then it's, you know, check in, let it happen, check in, because we don't learn if we don't fail generally, right? Yeah. You, know, you think about children, they learn from failing, right? It's, yes. it's no different. We kind of remove ourselves from that when we're adults, but it's it's really no different. Let let a failure happen within bounds, within mm -hmm. reason, right? You're running a business, right? right. Um, but but let, let that failure happen and then retrospect on that and learn from it. And then it just becomes part of how you how you operate. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sharing those lessons out has been really important. So we have, you know, like our um, uh, Viva Engage communities and things, and we encourage our teams to share not only their successes, but what are they challenged with and how are they overcoming those? You're also the, I think, the third person on our podcast that has talked about systems. Mm -hmm. Fonz Morris from Netflix yes. talked about systems and reinforcing systems. How important is that? Rules, sure. Tools, sure. Systems. Say more about your view of making it the system that enables the behavior. Absolutely. The system is, is absolutely critical. The whole system and helping people understand the system in its entirety. Even if you, you know, are summarizing it, mm -hmm. help them understand that um, ultimately, you know, running our business, we want to make sure that our work is connected to our strategy, that is connected to our investment decision making. Mm -hmm. And even our, you know, cells and our developers need to understand what they're doing and how it impacts. 
Um, and the people who are making those investment decisions need to understand how we deliver in order to understand you know, timing and, and funding and all of those types of things. So everyone understanding the system as a whole is really important um, at some level. Yeah, agreed. And then it's also the proper expectation setting and all of that as well. Yes. So folks actually know what is expected of them. Yes. Um, switching gears a little bit, one of the other things I really love that you talk about on your blog is around sending friends. Yes. So what do you mean by that and how do you bring that into, into the organization and your work? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so send friends, is, of course there are radical interpretations of that, but to me it's this group of people that I climb with who are there encouraging each other mm -hmm. um, to reach their goals, whatever those goals might be. Um, and I think some of the really important aspects of that in climbing are the people that you climb with, there's sort of, there's rules. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the rules is that you never tell someone how to do something on a route. You do your checks and your balances, you make, everybody, make sure everyone's safe, mm -hmm. but everyone's climb is their own and it's a puzzle to solve. And so if, if someone was, you know, shouting, they call it beta, from the ground and say, hey, no, go here, do this, do that, go here, um, it kind of takes the, the ownership out of it, mm -hmm. right? And so the unwritten rule is you don't tell the person you're belaying what to do unless they ask for help, right? Yeah. Um, and that is very synonymous with agility, right, and servant leadership um, and um, a really good lesson, right? Let let people help them understand the vision, right? Mm -hmm. And what are the objectives and the key results you're trying to achieve? And then let them, the people who know best, tell you how yeah. they're going to achieve it. Because they're going to maybe do it differently than what you may have thought they would. Um, and generally, um, and even climbers do this, they're gonna try to find the most efficient way to do it mm -hmm. on their own, right? Mm -hmm based on their strengths, but yep. but also the telling component takes away from the collaboration component. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing, sort of as a follow-on question, is when you're working at the puzzle, right, and, and that really requiring collaboration, explain more about that concept. So um, puzzles are generally hard to solve, right? Mm -hmm. um, and again, in climbing, you don't really tell someone unless they ask, but you kind of go back to your community. And, and what I love about the climbing community is when you need help, there's always someone there to tell you, right? yeah. well, you could try this. I mean, I, I had um, one of my I know, first outdoor climbs, I got stuck. Um, I, I had set the intent with my belayer, um, and this was at a kind of a women's climbing weekend, and it was someone who I'd not met before who was belaying me. So I was already a little nervous, but I trusted trusted the system, right? Um, and I was, I had set my intent that I was not going to get to the top of this route. I know my limits. Mm -hmm. I said, I want to get to this ledge over here. This is the ledge. This is where I'm going. Um, and I shared that with my belayer. So my belayer understood. And, you know, my belayer, since we had just met, asked me a really refreshing question. They said, how do you like to be encouraged mm -hmm. when you climb? And I was mm -hmm. like, that's fascinating. Thank you for asking that, yeah, right? Yeah. Because some people like to be cheered on. Some people just need to be quiet. You know, just I they're need in their silence. zen moment. Leave me alone. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it was really, it was a really cool question. I've taken that with me. But you know, I, I started my way up to this ledge after I'd set my intent, and I got stuck. I could not get past this part, and I was mm. just really frustrated. And I, I was like, I really want to get to this ledge. I know I can. I just don't know what's happening. I was getting tired. And I finally just looked out at the, at the crowd that was down there. I'm like, what should I do, right? Yeah. I, now I need help. Now I need your guidance. Help me, right. right? And they did. They said, put your foot right at this one spot. And I, I marked it with my chalk. And I took me a couple tries, got my foot there, and I got up on that ledge. And I still felt ownership because I tried. Mm -hmm. um, and I asked for help. They didn't give it to me, you know, and um, w without that. And, and I think again, with our teams in, in um, global IT and in agility in general, as a servant leader, I think that's a really important mm -hmm. concept. Okay, I got to poke on that one. Yeah. So Dom Price, your evangelist, has said a lot recently, and I believe him and I agree with him, about the extent of useful collaboration and 
the idea of over collaboration. Mm. So I'm a myth buster. So there's a lot yeah. of view in the world of, oh, the super cool kid companies, you know, they collaborate and they have all of this figured out and they know how to do the puzzle and all that stuff. But what we're actually finding is a lot of unuseful collaboration, too much consensus driven mm. yeah. leadership. Death by consensus. Death by consensus and inability yep. to make decisions. And then I hear you speak about, well, I need to own my decisions as a climber. And servant leadership is all about let people figure out their puzzles, which I agree yep. with. How do you balance in the real world, because mm -hmm. I know you do, how mm -hmm. do you balance the idea between autonomy, useful collaboration, and people solving for their own puzzles while being on mission. I know that's yep. a lot to unpack, but it's all part of like your storyline. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, so off the cuff on this one, I, I think that um, those guide rails I talk about a yeah. lot, they're a way to help mm -hmm. kind of stifle some of the unuseful collaboration and also really focusing on what are the objectives and what are the key results. And as leaders, if mm -hmm. you're focused on what are the objectives and what are the key results and what how are we progressing on those key results, that's what your your measure of good should be, and and not you know kind of going beyond that. Okay, are we are, have we met the key results? Wonderful. Is is mm -hmm. what we're going to do or what we're collaborating on going to go farther than what we set out to achieve? And does it make sense to do that, or do we need to pause for a minute and get that really important feedback yeah. on on where we're going before we go too far? Right before getting up on that ledge. That's right. Right, I love right it. before That's right. getting on the ledge. <laughs> That's right. Thank you so much, Megan. I think that that was a really great insight around how you fundamentally go about enterprise agility within the organization. I love the tie to your personal hobby. Uh, very awesome to see the analogy to rock climbing. So thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for Scaling Enterprise Agility, a podcast from Atlassian and Accenture. Thank you as well to our special guest, Megan Demon from Accenture, for sharing her insights today. You can check out more about Megan as well as the work Atlassian and Accenture are doing on enterprise agility using the links in our show notes. We'll be back with more episodes soon. Follow us now in your podcast app and you won't miss an episode.